Hello, this is Dirk. I'm finally back from my travels uh, in the Middle East and um, here I am back in Switzerland. I was thinking about lenses while I was traveling because I have seen this fantastic 24 millimeter 1.4 lens from Canon and it was really nice. So um, since I'm using different kinds of cameras, um, I was thinking about, you know, focal length, and out of focus depth of field stuff like that and sensor sizes so i thought well maybe i should make a video about that so uh my thought was, um, I have a Canon C200, this beast over there, which has a um, Super 35 sensor. Um, then I have a Canon 5D Mark II, very old one. Still, it's a full frame sensor. I have a Canon 7D, which is an uh, APS-C sensor. And then I oftentimes use this little baby here. It's just a Samsung Note 5. Uh, you know, when, when you don't have anything with you, still you have this, you know, best camera is the one that you have with you. The lenses. So I, I wanted to have like a little general talk about depth of field, the lens and the sensor size. So there is a crop factor um, that is applied to um, the sensors. This crop factor um, is based on the 35 millimeter classic negative size. This is crop factor one. Uh, that's our base uh, for evaluating the crop factors. The C200, let me get some numbers I've written down because, you know, can't remember them all. The C200 has a crop factor of 1.53. That means the sensor of this Canon C200 is 1.53 times smaller than a full frame sensor. Um, full frame sensor would be the uh, Sony a7 III, for instance, or the um, 1DX Mark II, um, or the 5D, whatever mark, you know. Um, these are full frame cameras and they are, have a crop factor of 1. Super 35 is a crop factor of 1.53. APS-C, which is the Canon 70 and other cameras, um, have a crop factor of um, 1.62, the Canon ones. So it's even a little bit smaller. You take uh, the full frame as a reference and then go back. Thing is, all cinema work is being done on Super 35 sensors or kind of Super 35 sensors. That means uh, if you shoot a TV commercial, if you shoot a movie, if you shoot um, anything that is kind of high standard um, uh, video work, it's not on full frame. It's all on around Super 35 size sensors. So. From my point of view, obviously from mine, I'm not from a photography point of view, but from a from a filmmaking point of view, Super 35 is the rule. So if I know how a 24 millimeter lens on Super 35 looks like, that's that's what it is for me. It's, I don't need to know how it looks like on a full frame sensor. Still, um, obviously I know how it looks like on a full frame sensor, but you know, um, this is the thing. If you are a filmmaker, then probably you want to calculate the other way around rather than coming back. Depends, because if you shoot on an A7 III or something like that, you're shooting full frame, then obviously that's the important thing for you. I'm usually shooting on the Ari Alexa, mostly on the Ari Alexa Mini. Um, which is a wonderful camera. It's fantastic. Like nearly everybody shoots with this camera. Somebody does with the red and somebody does with the um, regular Alexa, but I would really say that probably 80 to 90% of all the commercial shoots are done on the Alexa. So Alexa Mini, when you shoot open gate on the Alexa Mini, that means you use the whole sensor. Um, the um, crop factor is 1.33. Thing is, this is Ari Raw and it's kind of hard to handle because it's a lot of data and stuff. Mm, you don't really shoot open, uh, open gates uh, in Ari Raw. You should probably uh, Ultra HD, um, which is 3.2K, because the Ari doesn't have a 4K sensor. It has a, a 3. Point, what is that? 4 or 3.6K sensor, something like that. 
Um, anyhow, you shoot Ultra HD on 3.2K, which is uh, still great. Um, and this is a crop factor of 1.43. And this only, and you shoot in ProRes, and this only if you shoot, you know, if, if you really need this resolution. Because oftentimes you even shoot like in 2K. Because, you know, it's straightforward. You shoot in 2K, 2K, what is it? Crop factor of 1.59. And then we are exactly where we are at, or kind of where we are at the um, Super 35 crop factor. As you can see, crop factors vary a little bit here. Let's oh, let's talk about the red. The red is a disaster. Um, I mean, I don't I don't hate the red camera. A lot of people go like, ah, no, no, don't don't like red, don't like red. Red is a fantastic camera. I mean, it does does a good job. The only problem is if you don't sh shoot um, maximum resolution, which is a lot right now. I mean, is it 8K? Do you really want to shoot 8K? I mean, in post production, they will kill you. And if you if you post produce by yourself. You can't even send this stuff in play. It's just the overkill. The Red Dragon, let's call the Red Dragon, like the standard work of Horse of the Red. Red Dragon has um, a crop factor of 0 0.98 if you shoot an 8K. So this is basically full frame, which is nice, you know. Um, you basically have a wider uh, point of view with the same lens. So it's kind of like shooting on a Sony a7 III. That's it. But it's 8K, who shoots 8K? Nobody really wants to shoot 8K. Let's say you shoot 4K. 4K is, is okay, 4K, you can handle that. You have, you have some wiggle room to punch in and stuff. 4K is nice. 4K, it's crop factor 1.96 is a crop factor of nearly two. This is like micro four thirds. So this is like the kind of like the GH5 or something like that. So it's, it's, it's a tiny sensor. This is 4K. In, if you shoot in 8K, it's pretty wide. Then you shoot in 4K and it's only half the width. So you lose a lot of space. So what does it mean? If you want to have the same framing, you have to go further away. Go further away, it changes the depth background blur and everything. That is the big point. And if you shoot in 2K, you even have a crop factor of three, of 2.93. It's a crop factor of three. This is a lot. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't recommend that. In the red helium, if you shoot in 2K, it's crop factor of 5.38. <laughs> this is like, a, I don't know. It's probably worse than a smartphone. The Monstro, ooh, my goodness. This is also really, really bad. I mean, 8K is crop factor one, which is great. 4K is crop factor two. Not so nice anymore. 1.5 is okay, which is super 35. 2K is crop factor 4, 3.93. That is why shooting on the red is a little bit difficult. Not because the quality is not good, not because you know you don't have nice frame rates and everything. It's all great. Now the point. You want shallow depth of field. Okay, everybody wants that. A lot of people want that. I mean, it's it's not always necessary. You can have nice framing with a lot of things in focus, you know? So you don't really need this shallow depth of field all the time. It, I, I kind of feel it's like over pushed a lot of times, but let's say in certain situations, it's nice and I acknowledge this and I use it also. So how can you get this? I have this 50 millimeter, millimeter lens here and I'm around two meters away here, fully open at 1.4. If I come closer, like another meter closer, uh, then you probably see only my face, but then the background is really nicely blown out. Okay, that's cool. Would I have a full frame sensor? The image you saw right now was wider, a lot wider. So that means I could get closer having the same framing I have right now. And I would have a more blown out background with the same f-stop. Let's do some testing. So this is the same lens, but we move the camera. This is a 50 millimeter lens and a full frame body, and that's what we see. Same lens on an APS-C body with a crop factor of 1.62. This is a lot tighter. But we can see um, the tight image perfectly fits into the larger image uh, because it's basically only cropped. So the depth of field is identical. This now is um, moving the APS-C camera backwards, the same lens, everything the same, but you can see the 
perspective changes and the background blur changes quite a bit. So here we cycle through the different f-stops. It's all the same lens. Only the one on the lower right has a different position. Now, to match the background blur, we have to change the f-stop on the full frame body. And um, we actually get to a whopping two and a third stop difference. Here we keep everything in place, we just change the focal length. So this is a full frame body with um, a 7200 zoom lens um, zoomed to 113 millimeters. That's what we see. This is the same exact focal length with a Super 35 image and as we see it matches perfectly. This is the 70 APS-C and also that one matches perfectly. The crop factors obviously are different but uh, it works. Um, the depth of field is the same. Now we divide our 113 millimeters um, by a medium crop factor of roughly 1.6 and we get to a 70 millimeter lens. As we can see we kind of have the same angle of view here. But the background blur is different. So we also have to multiply the um, f-stop by the crop factor to get to the matching background blur. The matching f-stop for f2.8 on our crop sensor is f4.5 on the full frame sensor. Now we have the same background blur. We did the same test for another f-stop f4 on our crop sensor becomes an f6.4 on the full frame sensor. I know there have been other tests like that um, in the past and also explanations like the same thing. It's, I'm not doing anything new here. We just have to remember we have to multiply or divide, it depends on what direction you are going. Um, not only the focal length but also the f-stops. I'm just you know trying to, to talk, talk this through from a filmmaker's point of view. Everything still applies. You still need very fast lenses to get the same blurry background with the same framing that you get on a, on a full frame camera. But the point is and stays, if you are a filmmaker and you work on professional film cameras, probably Super 35 is what you're talking about. And this is what you're thinking about and this is how your lenses work. So you're not calculating backwards from full frame, but this is what you're doing. I guess in the future, even in the near future, it's going to change and the sensors are going to get bigger and bigger, even in, you know, in, in professional filmmaking. Um, they are already bigger, but as I said, nobody really wants to shoot 8K. Man, if you shoot 8K, um, other than you have really special uh, needs, you really don't want to do post-production in 8K. You don't. Even 4K is already a pain in the... <laughs> so, uh, if you want your sensor size, in 4K, as you see, it's still all Super 35. So, uh, if you are a filmmaker, you probably want to calculate in Super 35 sensor size. Doing this test, though, I, I figured a very, very strange thing here. Um, as you can see, we see the picture in picture where we have all the crop sensor images and the full frame images and they are one inside the other and you can see the Canon 5D and the Canon 7D are pretty much centered. And then you have the Canon C200 and the sensor seems to be like way out of the center. It's just completely in a different place. This is really strange. I mean, since 5D and 7D kind of match center wise, why is the C200 not matching? What does that mean? Does it mean that the uh, sensor is kind of slided to the side somehow? Mm, 
what is that? I don't know. I really want to find out. Not that I'm, I feel my material gets compromised somehow, but if the sensor was really shifted, that means I'm not in the center of what the lens is, but I'm going more to the border, which means, means that I probably have on one side of the image or one corner of the image, more chromatic aberration or whatever the lens gives you, you know, than on the other opposite border. We will have to find that out. I hope you guys will do some testing and uh, let me know. That was it. Um, thanks for watching. If you found this somehow useful, give me a thumbs up and a like and switch this bell on for new um, videos from my side and follow, of course. Thanks a lot and see you the next time. Um, 50 millimeter. So you shoot probably. Hello. Hmm, interesting. Shooting in HD, uh, in, in, in 8K.